Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, myself, Sanat Kumar Swain, uh, Assistant Professor at Vedang Institute of Technology. Um, in today's class, uh, we'll be discussing about uh, selective perception. Uh, in the previous, uh, we have already discussed about various kinds of perception, why perception is important in any kind of organizations. So we'll, we have gone through various kinds of perceptions. So in this, uh, uh, in this class, we'll be discussing about the selective perception. What do you mean by selective per uh, per perception? And how it is important or how it is uh, uh, important to understand selective per perception or any kind of organization. So we'll be going through a few clients, uh, slides and we'll see at how, uh, what is the meaning of selective perception? What is the importance of selective perception? Okay. So, introduction, okay. Uh, now, what do you mean by select? Selective perception, perception we already know from the previous class we have, uh, we have discussed what is perception, the way we perceive something, the way we perceive a person, the way we perceive a, uh, understand a uh, situation, okay, what goes into our head, what goes into our mind, the way we understand something is known as perception, okay. Now, selective, what do you mean by selective? From selection, become choosy, we, we, we tend to be choosy. We tend to choose something and we tend to ignore something, okay. So let's say uh, as because uh, in an organizational setting you will see that a lot of people from a lot of uh, uh, socioeconomic background, okay, their interest uh, uh, backgrounds, their uh, attitudes, their experiences because there are a lot of people from different kinds of experiences, okay. Uh, when they come together in any kind of organization, what happens is that they tend to select, or they tend to perceive, okay, they become very choosy, they become very selective in their perception. Okay. So, um, there is a 10 uh, 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 sense of biasness, okay, in uh, their attributes, okay. So, what happens with that? Uh, people, sometimes what happens is that people become consciously, okay, people consciously, they are selective and sometimes what happens is that that's a cognitive biasness where people unconsciously they uh, they choose or they become selective in various kinds of perception okay. they are having uh, notions and beliefs predefined what do you mean by predefined predefined notions and beliefs for example you ask a small kid just an example I'm giving. You ask a kid uh, that um, host to stay in dark rooms. Okay, so that's a pre-defined uh, uh, notions or belief which we have incorporated into the minds of the young kids. So they tend to believe that yes, in the dark rooms there is a ghost. Really, there's a ghost. Okay. Uh, so similarly, as because we are coming from different kinds of backgrounds different kinds of experience, we are having different kinds of life experiences, our attitudes. So we tend to perceive and become selective unconsciously. We filter out the um, irrelevant perceptions, which is not based on our beliefs and thought process. So that is known as selective perception. We select something. Maybe it is a conscious selection or that may be an unconscious selection, okay. So, in the context of Indian perspective, okay, if we are talking about Indian perspective, in the Indian scenario, we'll be, we'll be seeing that how the organizations, okay, due to various kinds of cultural, various kinds of social and individual factors, they tend to become choosy and they tend to become selective in their perceptions, okay. Now, number one, cultural influences. The cultural influences is extremely high, very important. In any kind of organizational setting, you, you see when there is a selective perception, cultural influences becomes very extremely important. Why? Because you see, India is a very diverse country. We are having a rich cultural her heritage and um, selective perspective. Perception can be influenced by cultural values, norms, and traditions. We are having innumerable types uh, types of cultural values, innumerable norms, 
innumerable uh, traditions. Okay. So, for example, individuals from different regions may interpret organizational policies or practices differently based on their cultural backgrounds. So, uh, these days, okay, uh, so this is a uh, theory and practice we can say, but uh, this is fast eroding because the multinational companies, they um, are tending to bridge the gaps of cultural influences. Like, um, the multinational organizations, um, for example, for example, uh, an MNC who is operating uh, in two different states, let's say in Orissa and one in Delhi or in Gurgaon or whatsoever. So a person, okay, who is working in Orissa for that particular organization, okay, they will feel that same policies or practices in that organization when he or she is traveling to different kinds of um, different offices based in different locations of that organization. So they, they may not feel that cultural influences, okay, they may not become selective perception, they, they should not be selective per perception because the policies um, of that organization may be similar to each and every person. So, but, but still, but still as because uh, um, individuals they are coming from different kinds of backgrounds, they still tend to have selective perceptions okay, uh, in various kinds of organizational settings. Okay. So, cultural influences plays a very important role in shaping the way we perceive something. Okay. Okay, so what might be acceptable or desirable behavior in one region may be perceived differently in another, leading to selective interpretation of organizational events of our communication. Okay. Like for example, in any kind of organizational event, okay, in any kind of organizational event or any kinds of communication, okay, uh, the way the organization setting works or the interpretation that may be different for different kinds of individuals as because we are coming from a different social economic background, socio-cultural background, okay. What behavior may be acceptable to somebody that may not be acceptable to us or that may not be acceptable, acceptable to somebody else. Sipping wine in, in any kind of organizational meetings okay, or organizational uh, social, uh, social events, that may be um, uh, perfectly fine to one person, but that, that, that may not be fine, that may not be acceptable, okay, in for an, another kind of individual to stay in a living relationship may be okay in any kind of cultural settings, but that may not be right or that may not be, uh, some people may not feel comfortable or acceptable in different kinds of region, okay. So our cultural Culture influences lot in attributing to what kind of selective perceptions. Next, hierarchical structure. A hierarchical structure means what do you mean? What do you mean by hierarchical structure? We have already discussed this in the previous class. Uh, various organizations they have hierarchical structure where what happens is that the authority and status play a significant role, okay. Um, like a sort of authoritarian rules comes into play, the status comes into play, okay. So what happens is that the employees working for that kind of particular organization, they may selectively perceive information based on the position of those involved. So what happens is that uh, if there is a hierarchical structure, if there is an authoritarian structure, in any organization, they employ working for that organization, they may think, they may perceive the information very selectively based on the position or based on the seat or based on the status which the, uh, the higher organizations are, uh, higher authorities are involved in, okay. That also diminishes or that also hinders the organizational growth in the long run. Uh, subordinates or the, um, uh, the staffs, from the lower strata, they may interpret or they may interpret the feedback from superior differently depending on the perception of the power dynamics. So there is a power dynamic 
in each and every organization and based on that power dynamic based on the interpretations of the feedback of the subordinates they have a different kinds of perceptions of that power okay. so what happens is that this can lead to selective attention to messages that align with their expectation of authority figure so what happens you align yourself to the uh, messages or you align with the um, uh, policies which align with you, you you tend to give attention to those kinds of messages or informations or policies which aligns with your selection of authority figures that is there what you are expecting your expectation if your expectation is uh, in alignment with your uh, actual uh, uh, perception then only you perceive the same so what happens is that in the long run that uh, the organization structure fails okay the organization goals fails this kind of issues social identity okay social identity is also uh, sometimes plays a very important role in in various kinds of selective perception okay um as already discussed in india there are a lot of caste there are a lot of religions there are a lot of languages which comes into play okay and that shapes the individual's perceptions within any kind of organization okay so we feel social identity plays a very important role well i would suggest that that is not a very good uh, thing to be boastful of because social identity when you are uh, working for a particular organization then you should keep aside your social identity rather you are you should be uh, um, should be addressed in that organizational structure rather than your social identity or very or your caste based identity or your religion based identity or your language based identity or your ethnic based identity rather you should be should be uh, you should be termed as per the organizational identity okay so what happens is that uh, employees may selectively interpret information based on their social identities or affiliation if an employee has uh, various kinds of social identities or various affiliation to a particular organization or a particular area or particular culture or a particular religion okay or a social norm then that employee is going to interpret that, those information in a much much selective way so what happens these can also lead to biasness in decision making favoritism okay or various kinds of discrimination so definitely if you are if an employee that may be a higher rank employee or a lower rank employee if you are very selective in your interpretation of any kind of information okay, based on your interest or affiliation then definitely that is going to be a biasness in the decision making process okay you may show favoritism to your particular employee okay you may ignore the hard work of a particular employee and you may be showing some sort of favoritism okay to a particular employee so what happens is that that is going to affect the organization in the long run definitely so what happens is that uh, selective uh, social identity or affiliations may hamper the organizational structure in a much 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 better uh, in a wrong way okay or in a negative way confirmation biasness okay what do you mean by confirmation biasness confirmation biasness is also a form of like uh, uh, like selective perception which is prevalent in various kinds of uh, indian uh, organizations okay, organizations uh, in this uh, confirmation bias what happens that if an individuals okay they try to find out the information based on uh, if they are having certain sort of stereotypes or certain types of belief sets okay that thought says their uh, behavioral set okay so if that is in confirmation with that uh, their uh, stereotypes then only they tend to select those information and they try to downplay the other contradictory evidences okay so that is also that is also going to hamper in the decision making process or in kind of biasness okay there may, there may be confirmation biasness if a person is trying to seek out the information which conforms to their their thought patterns their beliefs patterns okay or their stereotypes pattern okay and they will be ignoring the other aspects so that is definitely is going to be a harmful effect in the 
organization. See, for example, for example, let's say there's a performance evaluation in an, in any kind of organization, and the managers, okay, they may focus more on positive feedback for employees. They perceive as high performance while overlooking or dismissing negative feedback. See, this is very, very, very dangerous, um, uh, dangerous thing for any kind of organization. If there is a performance review or there's a performance appraisal in any kind of organization, what happens is that certain managers, they focus more, okay, more on the employees who they consider that they are the best performers. Well, they overlook, they ignore the employees who they think or they, uh, they, they perceive as less performance, okay. Or they also dismiss the negative feedback. Well, if you are, if you are dismissing the negative feedback, how a person is going to uh, improve in the future, okay. So, definitely if you are, are, if you are giving focus to the best performers, you should also give importance to the less performers so that they can cope up with the higher performers, okay. You cannot ignore or simply overlook the negative feedback, okay. Because definitely your social identity comes into play, okay. That is extremely dangerous for any kind of organization though. Communication styles, <coughs> definitely we have already discussed about the communication styles in the previous uh, class that um, in, in, in India is a diverse country, okay, and there are a lot of dialects, there are a lot of regional languages which is been spoken, and selective per perceptions occur when um, there is a uh, what a person who comes into um, um, based on their linguistic preference or comprehensive uh, comprehension ability. For example, Oriya Oriya, Bengali Bengali, okay, or from different kinds of other uh, uh, languages, okay, they feel in alignment, okay, and linguistic preferences becomes uh, selective, like that give rise to selective perception, okay. So definitely that is also going to hamper the organization in the longer growth, okay. So communication styles also imp is important. That is why you see in most of the organization there is, they prefer to, or they tend to speak a single official language that may be Hindi or that may be English. You cannot speak in a regional language, okay. And most of the cases, what happens is that they also changes your name. You're not, uh, you, I mean, uh, an English name is being given. In the multinational organizations, particularly you see these days, uh, uh, a different kind of name is been given, is been allocated to you and you are not, you're not, um, uh, you are not been called in your uh, actual name rather than a official name. That may be um, an English name Richard or if that is a Richard, then that may be Richard, okay. So uh, why this has been given? Because to your communication styles or your communication should be, uh, should, uh, should be in alignment with the organizational structure. Moreover, it also does happen that a person who's, uh, who's, who's coming from the south, southern part of India, or from the northern part of India, they, they, the, the way they speak or they, the way they communicate, uh, it's a huge difference. Okay. So that also give rises to selective um, perception. <sighs> Misinterpretation or selective attention also gives rise to various kinds of misunderstanding and various kinds of conflict within an organization. Okay. So, uh, to make an equal, okay, equal uh, uh, way of communication, various organizations, they uh, ask the organ um, employees to either speak in English or either speak in Hindi or whatsoever, whatever their official language may be, so that they uh, mitigate the misunderstanding and various kinds of conflict which may arise in the, the organization, okay. Now, political dynamics, what do you mean by political dynamics? We have talked about the power dynamics in the previous class. Now, we'll be discussing about the political dynamics. What do you mean by political dynamics? You see, organizational politics is there are ubiquitous in any workplace. Ubiquitous means what? Obvious, it is there, okay. So what happens is that in case of any kind of uh, organizations, okay, 
there is organizational politics okay so what kind of organizational politics are there uh, selective perceptions can be influenced by political alliances personal agendas and power struggles you see um, there are people from various kinds of political alliances okay the political thought the political interests okay not all of the uh, um, people of in of an organization may align with a single political alliance they may have different kinds of political alliances okay moreover they they may have personal agendas okay? they may have personal agendas and they may have personal power struggles as well so these kind of uh, these all influences okay the selective perception so this is all about the political dynamics within an organization okay employees may selectively interpret the uh, information okay to gain advantage or protect their interest within the organization so what happens they they in deliberately okay they deliberately they select or they interpret those informations which to which they can gain in advantage okay or they can protect their interest within any kind of so what happens in these cases what happens there is the facts may be distorted there may be manipulations okay there may be biasness there may be different kinds of uh, wrong decision making okay in the uh, in any kind of organization and the organizational goal can be undermined very dangerous for any kind of organization now conclusion okay so if we are concluding what happens uh, after uh, discussing a uh, few slides about um, uh, uh, selective perception if we are going to conclude it so what happen if there is a selective perception okay selective perception is extremely uh, negative for any kind of organization okay uh, it um, promotes biasness okay and uh, it encourages open communication foster diversity uh, it is essential to mitigate the if negative effect of uh, selective perception in india organization is essential to promote awareness of biases uh, uh, encourage open communication foster diversity and inclusion and provide training on cultural sensitivity and effective communication it those uh, to mitigate or to minimize the effect of any kind of selective uh, perception in any organization definitely we are going to encourage open communication De definitely we are going to uh, e e all inclusive uh, um, um, diversity and uh, inclusion should be there in any in organization okay uh, we should uh, uh, train the, our employees on culture sensitivity that we have to uh, uh, um, give respect to all the cultural sensitivities uh, cultural aspects of different various employees okay and effect on communication communication strategies but sometimes it, it does become extremely difficult to um, uh, to follow all those uh, um, to promote awareness or to encourage the, the these uh, these things because people they still tend to become selective they, they still the employees they are still uh, selective they have selective perceptions so effective training effective communication skills okay is very important to minimize or to mitigate the harmful effects the selective perception see if there is a selective perception then definitely in the long run the organization is going to suffer trust me it is going to suffer so there should not be uh, any kind of selective perception but you can perceive as as it is as an uh, uh, i mean based on your own thought process you you, you are going to perceive but see perception cannot be trained i mean an organization cannot train a person that you can you have to perceive this thing in this way it is that is your thought process that is your perception the way you perceive that the way you believe okay. so the thing is that we can mitigate we can minimize the organization can minimize the harmful negative effects of the selective perception okay and additionally 
by creating a transparent process okay the structure the organizational structure if that is a transparent process okay then also we can uh, we can minimize the um, uh, structure and structure can help minimize opportunities for selective in interpretation so if there is a uh, selective interpretation then we can minimize those we can mitigate those okay and foster fairness and equity within any organization thank you very much uh, for your attention uh, if you have any doubt you can just jot down those doubts and doubts in the doubt section and i'll be much more happy to uh, clear off your doubts okay thank you so much thank you